Thank you very much, Wendy. And again, um, hello everybody. And um, I started out by saying good morning. I realize it's not morning for all, all of you. But let's get right into today's presentation. We have a lot to cover and um, in the, uh, the interest of respecting your time, we've uh, reduced this presentation to just about 20 minutes, <clears throat> leaving a few minutes at the end for, um, for interaction for, for questions. A couple of um, uh, quotations that I'd like to start with that I think are very powerful, that I think set the, the mood, set the tone for, for the extreme potential and opportunity for projects. Uh, this first one says, projects drive business innovation and change. In fact, the only way that organizations can change, implement a strategy, innovate, or gain competitive advantage is through projects. Very, very powerful statement and great news for those of us involved in project management because it suggests a, um, uh, a high level of, um, of job security. The next one I think is even more important. Projects have become the essential part of any organization. By the year 2025, which is only a few years away, senior leaders and managers will spend at least 60% of their time selecting, prioritizing, and overseeing the execution of projects. This is, this is really, really um, important, a very significant change in the understanding of the importance of projects to the survival of organizations. I um, put together and, and teach a class at Lehigh University in their executive education department, uh, specifically on the role of executive um, senior management in sponsoring projects. And research, uh, our own research um, has shown that the role of the project sponsor, the involvement of a project sponsor, or lack thereof is the number one reason for projects failing to deliver the business value for which they were justified. And it's not because senior executives are, are not good people or not intelligent people. It's simply because unless they have grown up through the, the ranks of project management, they don't understand the critical role of being a project sponsor throughout the life of a project. But that's another presentation for another time. But we'll touch on that as we go throughout um, the presentation today. Now, to give credit where credit is due, uh, much of what you're going to hear today um, is based on the book Project Management 2.0 by Dr. Harold Kersner. I had the, um, the honor, the pleasure of being invited to share the stage with him in, um, in Detroit a couple of years ago, um, a full day of project management presentations uh, devoted entirely to PM 2.0. And it's based in large part on, on his book and my own work that we put together this presentation for you. Now, what we're going to talk about today, <clears throat> number one, what is Project Management 1.0? You can't really talk about Project Management 2.0 without setting the stage first. Then what differentiates PM 1.0 from PM 2.0? What are the, why are we here? What, what are the limitations of PM 1.0? Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about the um, driving forces for more uh, all-encompassing metrics. And then I will talk about an early adopter. Who are some of the early adopters of PM 2.0 and why should we care? And then finally, I've got some very specific steps, recommendations for you on how you can get started toward implementing PM 2.0, literally starting tomorrow if you, if you so choose. And then there are bibliographies at the end of the presentation, uh, both books and uh, links online. And <clears throat> As you'll see when we go through the presentation, I always include more content than we can cover in 20 minutes. And the reason I do that is twofold. One, I want you to have this information. And two, I want to give you a reason to go back and re-read the presentation after the fact. So if any of you would like a copy of the presentation, simply send me an email. I will get it out to you before the end of the weekend, uh, along with a white paper that, um, that we put together. So with that, let's get started. <clears throat> Project Management 1.0. Uh, <clears throat> we can talk a little bit about the history of project management. I mean, literally going back some, some 9,000 years, mankind has been doing things 
collaborative, collaboratively for a long time. I mean, ever since the point where you and I were out hunting the mastodon and we decided which one of us was going to chase the mastodon off the um, cliff and which one of us was going to stand at the base of the cliff with a, steer, a spear to make sure he was dead, we were essentially dividing our tasks, uh, separating work, and, and basically putting together a project plan. Now, obviously, things got a little more complicated during the, um, uh, I'll say, the agricultural age. Uh, we, as a species, developed the ability to, to, er to um, erect very, very complex structures. And again, project management grew in maturity over these years. And modern project management pretty much got its start with World War II. Uh, essentially, the Manhattan Project, which, um, again, another topic for another time. Uh, my grandfather was actually a, a member of the Manhattan Project um, from his career as a professor at Princeton University. But the point here is that we have been managing projects very effectively for many, many years. And so the question is, is there something right with PM 1.0? And if so, why are we even talking about PM 2.0? And so there are certain assumptions of PM 1.0. One is that there will be a, I'll say a master builder, um, someone who has done a project similar to this before, who puts together an effective project plan. The other members of the project team respect the discipline and the um, uh, effectiveness of that plan and are committed to, uh, to completing their portion of the plan. Anything that is a deviation from that baseline will be treated as an exception that must be corrected. And so in essence, it is a very top-down, um, very autocratic, very one-sided view of projects. Now, the point is that it does have some strengths. Number one, it's disciplined. Number two, there are a lot of projects, even today, for which this approach is absolutely appropriate. I want to be clear that we're not throwing PM 1.0 away. We're simply saying that it doesn't apply in all cases. And so there are many projects, even today, for which this approach is entirely appropriate. So for example, if we're building a bridge or building a new highway or building a new building, these are things we have been doing for a long, long time. We know how to do them. We're very disciplined in that approach. And PM 1.0 is absolutely the way to continue to do these things. In New York City, we put up hundreds of buildings every year. We do it cost effectively, we do it successfully, and there's no reason to change. So having said that, what is wrong with PM 1.0? <clears throat> well, the first thing is the definition of a project. This is uh, taken directly from the PMBOK, stating that a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. What's wrong with this definition? The thing that is wrong is that there is no mention of business value. And unfortunately, <clears throat> there's a great quotation that says, there is nothing worse than doing well that which should not be done at all. And far too often in the business world in particular, we undertake projects without clearly defining the business value. And there are only three reasons to undertake a business project. Hi there, I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over a thousand hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. 
Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.